Hey guys, did you guys know that there is links between mental health, disability and physical exercise and they're all linked to very positive outcomes. Okay, so guys, I'm going to be jumping into it today and quite literally jumping in. So guys, hi, I'm Andrea. I talk about disability, the NDIS and live in Australia and shout out to the viewer on Reddit who was very encouraging and suggested this topic. Now, first one I want to jump into is that, quick disclaimer, I am not a certified personal trainer, exercise physiologist or physio. So this is just from my research. So guys, take what you guys need and run with it and feel free to leave the rest. Now, the first thing is exercise with a disability, if it is a physical disability, is going to look inherently different. Um, guys, in the research for this, talking to an exercise physiologist and a physio and a personal trainer, that we forget that there's different forms of exercise. We forget that housework as exercise, but standing up from the seated position as exercise. Some forms of craft are exercise, and they're all different forms of exercise. Um, hemming a tutu is an exercise in hand-eye coordination. So this is, for example, so this one leads into my next one is in your disability and um, moving beyond your disability within the limits as well so you can't go from someone who is living with chronic pain but can move to running a marathon overnight that's impractical and not even for some people may not even be possible but you can go from being in chronic pain being obese to with the professional's help, so that being, especially if you're on the NDIS, talk to your support coordinator, plan manager, support workers, you might be able to see a dietitian or nutritionist. I've always found a dietitian a lot better. There's a lot less restrictions as well. Personal preference. And you might also be able to see an exercise physiologist. Um, just be aware that gym memberships do come under everyday living expenses. And guys, then we move into, you need to find what exercise works for you. So if you have gone from not being mobile for whatever reason, start small. It could be clapping along to some music. It could be doing a little more housework. It could be um, going for a 15 minute walk each day. It could be playing Pokemon Go. Um, there's all forms of different sorts of exercise. And the big thing with disability is work within your limits. If you're an ambulatory wheelchair user because of chronic pain or limb difference, that might look like upper body strengthening. That might be being able to tolerate your prosthetic more. It might look like walking and learning to use your prosthetic. It might also be chair exercise. And so this is where I'm going to get into some ones that the exercise physiologists and physios can help with. Because if you're a long time follower of the channel, you guys would have known that I have struggled with dizziness for a long time. Finally have an answer for it. It's vestibular dysfunction got into a wonderful specialist balance physio and as part of that I have to do some hand-eye coordination exercises um, as well. So guys I will try and get a support worker to film them and pop them up as a bit of a short. Guys let me know if you want me to do that one as well. Drop that in the comments and guys so that's the thing as well. Working with your medical professionals is really important. So getting a full checkup from your doctor, GP, physician, 
and I'll, as well as any specialist you see. So I had to get clearance from the nose and throat specialist before I could go back to a formal exercise program. They weren't necessarily against me having what's called incidental exercise. So guys, incidental exercise is the exercise that we do every day. So that's if you're living in two story house, walking up and down stairs, if you are doing housework, so that's doing the washing up, that's vacuuming floors, that's mopping floors, that's hanging out laundry. Um, and guys, most mobile phones do have pedometers or an inbuilt app, but guys, don't take them as gospel as well. Using a pedometer and aiming for step count, and there are ways for gamifying. So if you're a support worker working with a client, that is exercise resistant, but they you see for their health that would benefit. Gamifying it. So that could be Pokemon Go, that could be making it a inter cell house competition, having sports days if you're in the day center, all things that help physical exercise. And the other one is doing a community exercise class. I know the Heart Foundation has walking groups. In Toowoomba, we've got Happy Hikers. There's also gardening programs. Gardening, people forget that that is exercise as well. It doesn't just have to be going to the gym as well. And guys, for different life stages, we also see need different levels of exercise as well and different intensities of exercise because of muscle and bone density that is lost during aging. And so, guys, that's a really important one to take in. If you're an ambulatory wheelchair user, taking in muscle and bone strength. So there is bone density scans that you can do. And that's where working with the exercise professionals. So the physiotherapists, exercise physiologists and personal trainers is really important as well. And if you're working with a personal trainer, working with a personal trainer who has specialist knowledge in disability, is critical because you don't want to make your disability worth and guys now there is also another side effect of exercise that people with a disability generally aren't aware of and that is the mental health benefits so especially yes it is hard during winter as of recording we're in july and that is winter in australia so guys we're in july so it can be hard to walk outside but walking is one of the simplest exercises you can do if you're able to walk getting out into the parks the gardens the national parks all free take a cut lunch remember to take your rubbish with you uh all great and so there is a mental health benefit of being away from technology, being away from social media, you're able to let the thoughts, you be with your thoughts, you be in the present moment, which then reduces depression and anxiety. It's not a cure-all, but you do have endorphins, which are feel-good chemicals running through your brain at the time. And you're also goal setting. So once you achieve the goals, as well so if you're trying to lose weight and get fit and you drop a couple i'm going to go clothing sizes i'm not big on scales and numbers but you drop a couple of clothing sizes great um that is a great motivator as well and so guys we also see that if you're exercising in a group there's the social aspect, so you're not socially isolated. Reducing that depression and anxiety that a lot of people with disabilities experience and face, especially if they're not working, not part of the volunteering community as well. So being able to work is a big thing within your limits. Um, that's with anything. That be within a food budget, a housework, energy. And that's the other thing, that it increases energy. There's been a recent study done that's been a follow-up to the PACE study, but it was a lot 
wider of a study done, but actually worked out that exercise for people with fatigue was one of the best cures for their fatigue in the long term. So it wasn't going from being bed bound with fatigue to running a marathon. It was graded gradual exercise. So it was 15 minutes of exercise per day graded. So 15 minutes for one week, 20 minutes the next week, up to a sustainable amount of exercise where a person's fatigue level wasn't necessarily gone from their lives but their fatigue was at a manageable level and a lot of them the participants reported reported better quality of life reduced fatigue of course and reduced pain levels as well and better general overall quality of life because they were able to go to the events they were able to keep up as well and we're seeing a lot of incidental evidence of this in the abc's programs the nursing home for four-year-old and the nursing home for teenagers particularly the oldies were engaged with the teens they were learning new technology they were exercising and they were exercising on their own terms as well so guys um Thank you for listening. Um, please, if you can, like, share, subscribe, especially if you're enjoying the content. That really helps the channel. And we are up to 50, 56 watch hours. So, guys, if you can share the content, it really helps the micro creators. And, guys, I'm seeing that disability is a very heavy topic to talk about. So, guys, if you guys want me to do a bit more disability humor, disability humorous content drop it in the comments below because disability is something that we really do need to start talking about i've seen some horrific reddit threads in researching for this video um we'll be putting some stories more up on the blog as well and guys if you can be kind as well and i will see you guys in the next video